Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and welcome back to Design Patterns and Architecture in Java. And in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about design methodologies. And in fact, I, I don't know much about stuff like UML and uh, very formal software design methodologies. So I'm, I'm not the best person to ask about it. And I just wanted to make one video here to talk about what I do know and my ideas about it and experience about it. And then in the next tutorial in this series, we'll move straight on to looking at actual practical design patterns that you can use. So when I first started as a, working as a software developer back in 97, the established idea seemed to be that you should design your software meticulously up front using a bunch of different sort of boxes like this, um, which will be connected to each other using various sort of arrows and things like that. Sometimes circles or triangles came into it. <laughs> I'm being a bit vague because um, I've really got no clue what this was about, although I did take a course in it at one point, but I, I left that course, so I can't remember any of it. And this, this was the idea at the time. So people would spend um, a lot of time planning out their software. And uh, then they would give this design to a bunch of developers to implement it. And the person who actually designed the software might not even be a developer as such. He might be a software architect. And then the design will be handed over to the actual developers who would implement it. Now, this has fallen out of favour somewhat. It's still a, a respectable way to design software, but what people realised was that this led to um, huge uh, budget, budgetary and schedule overruns, typically. I mean, it led to overruns, absolutely, as a matter of course. And uh, the reason for that was that, well, I think the reason is the, the same reason why I, I partly dislike this whole way of working, because very few software developers are, and very few architects even are really able to fully specify a piece of software in a way that's completely satisfactory. And people come along and work on it, and they realize as they're working that things should be changed. And when it's released to um, end users, especially if it's released to end users as an alpha version, they will make all kinds of requests and you'll realize that the, de the design had many flaws in it in the first place. And uh, the idea that you can design a piece of software all up front and it will be perfect and then you can implement it is a flawed idea to start with. So for a long time, it was absolutely the normal case and to some extent it still is that any piece of software would overrun its schedule and its budget, which is terrible really. Now, uh, this way of working for that reason, um, and, and in fact, I, I want to mention also before I move on that another flaw with this is, is that it takes a lot of the creativity out of writing software because software developers, they see their work as fundamentally being creative in nature, or many of them do. They, they like the process of thinking about how the software will be designed and they like the process of figuring it out as they go along and if they're handed a design effectively by management then it's no fun for them implementing their design even if it's their own design a lot of the time it takes the fun out of actually implementing it and I, I think that uh, you, you have to have an element of designing software as you go along in in order to really enjoy the process and for a lot of software de developers, and for, for certainly for me, even if you're the one who's going to design it up front, it ends up feeling like the design phase is, is like filling in a massive form. It's just incredibly tedious for a lot of people. And then implementing it, which should be the fun part, should be the creative part, becomes like just dotting the I's and crossing the T's on, on this form. So... And if you've got a bunch of alienated, bored software developers, then of course your, your budget and your schedule are going to overrun. It's completely understandable. Now, for all of these reasons and more besides, this way of working 
where you design everything up front and I don't really know what the official name for it is so I'll just write up front here is uh, is falling increasingly out of favour and it's being replaced by what I personally felt was a good idea in the first place which was um, a kind of iterative approach to software development and this is kind of summed up by the name Agile and I don't really, I'm not really sure what Agile is, I think the definition of it is somewhat fluid but the basic idea in Agile programming as I understand it, well there's a bunch of basic ideas but a part of it is the idea of iterative development and now before you start writing a software you've got to plan certain things ahead, that's for sure you've got to know what you're going to write, you know, what what will the software actually be? What will it actually be? <laughs> because uh, you can't just start writing software, obviously thinking, oh, I don't, I'm not sure what I'm actually going to write. So you've got to plan it out to some extent, and you have to decide on stuff like what technology you're going to use. It's really important to to figure that out up front. And you've got to think about how is it going to be deployed because if you just write some software and then you find that you've, you've got no clear way of deploying it, you again, you'll overrun your budget or your schedule. And you have to think about installers. Like if you, With Java, we have like Java Web Start, which is a really good way to deploy Java programs. But if you want the Java program to be something that you can give to people on, um, on a CD or something, then you need to think how you're going to get it onto the CD. Will a runnable jar do the trick? Can you use something like, for example, JSmooth to create a runnable exa? Will that be adequate? Adequate? Or do you need to write an installer? And if you need to write an installer, you have to be aware that that's going to be a substantial task with a big learning curve in itself. So you have to think about deployment. And you also have to think up front about what the software will look like or at least what the front end will look like and one thing that I've noticed is that software developers as a whole tend not to like really thinking about how the program will look and it's not always true but often if software developers are given a task of designing the front end of a program they will often design something that no normal you no normal human user will actually want to use. They think of things from a technical perspective very often. And um, really, to design the front end of a software, of, of, of a piece of software, you want someone to think explicitly about the front end design. And you also have to be beware of implementation considerations creeping into the front end, which is something that tends to happen if a software developer designs the front end. You want the front end to be something that's designed with ease of use in mind and not so much with ease of implementation because really this, the actual development of the software should be should um, fit into a, a good front end design otherwise no one will want to use the software or they'll be, they will be confused by it. And certainly it won't be a popular piece of software if the front end is cryptic and hard to use. And the front end, ideally, ideally it should be possible to use it without even consulting a manual. Ideally, it should be self-explanatory. So you, you do have to think about some things up front, but I would argue you don't have to design all the software up front. And the idea behind an iterative approach is that you first write a kind of outline version of your software and this should be hopefully really really quick like you should be able to get some kind of basic version of your software up and running like really quickly like in days or hours and it, that version is going to be missing most of the functionality but it should at least um, it should at least provide you a starting point and a kind of framework in which to add new functionality and then once you've got your basic version of the software running you can then look at kind of take a take a, a breather and kind of look at what the next step will be and then start to implement the next step and you can go on like this until 
um, through different kind of iterations until you reach a point where you've got software that is releasable or is at least an, an alpha release. And I, it seems to me that it's better to have in mind near the beginning a, a, an idea for a finished piece of software that would be as unambitious as possible. Like your initial release, you should, you should try to ask yourself, what could I actually release that would be the easiest thing I could actually do? And once you've done that, you can then um, have more time in the schedule for adding functionality to that software. But if you start off with a really, really ambitious piece of software in mind, then you may well just run out of time or money and it will never get finished. Or what will get finished will be something that's quite horrific. So it's better to ask yourself, in my view, near the start, what is the minimal release of this software that I could make and initially work towards that and try to schedule more time or money afterwards to then fill in the rest of the functionality. At least this is my view. And I might mention that a lot of software goes through um, various releases. And the idea is you often have um, alpha, which is an initial very buggy version of the software, beta, where it mostly works, but it's still got some bugs. Um, the release version, which should be bug free and bugs are often categorized according to like a where they must be fixed that's right must be fixed um, although software does end up getting released with um, a, a, a category bugs in it sometimes unfortunately but a means they really should be fixed B means they ideally should be fixed if possible should should be fixed and then you have like C bugs which um, it's desirable to fix those obviously but they might not be might not be fixed so um, the basic idea here is that from what I've seen, this, the software indus industry is moving away from designing everything up front to an iterative, iterative approach where you concentrate, where it's kind of a creative process and you concentrate on getting different versions of your software finished and you're looking at each version and then trying to improve it, which doesn't mean that you, ha you don't do any upfront design, but it means you don't try to specify everything in advance because that really tends to demotivate people and makes for bad software, I would argue. Now, under the umbrella of agile programming, there's, I've noticed there's also this idea called the Scrum, where um, it seems, as far as I understand, and I haven't gone into this in depth because the subject doesn't interest me, but in, in a Scrum, um, everyone basically has to say every day, uh, what they did yesterday, what they're doing today, and what they're going to do tomorrow. And I actually worked for a place where we all had to stand up and go around the whole team, and we had to say this. Now, it seems to me that this is a good way of annoying people. A lot of managers like this because it, they, it gives them an illusion of control. But often software developers, not always, some people might love this, but often software developers themselves don't, um, don't like doing this. And if your manager comes around, if you're working in a team and your manager comes around and asks you how, how it's going and he gets your opinion on what should be done next and all this kind of thing, you kind of feel often honored that you know it's kind of an enjoyable conversation. Whereas if you've got to stand up and go through some formal thing like this and your manager's forcing you to stand up and say what you did yesterday, today and tomorrow, it does piss a lot of people off. And if you get, as soon as you get people who've got some kind of ax to grind and they're, they've got the kind of harboring resentment, then you're going to get overruns as well because in your budget and your schedule, it seems to me. And I'm just coming at this from um, the perspective of someone who was uh, an employee for many years because I've never managed a team and I don't want to. I, so th these are just my thoughts on this. But I think that um, 
software involves a very high degree of concentration. And when a software developer is in the flow and they're enjoying doing what they're doing and they're feeling creative and they feel like they're in control and people are listening to them and so forth, they can really get a lot of software de- done quite quickly. But the moment someone's a bit alienated and their mind's not fully on the job, then the budget and the schedule is going to overrun and software development could take up as much time as there is available and more time besides. And the only way to avoid that is to ensure that people are in the flow and as much as possible and they are enjoying what they are doing. So I think as soon as you start introducing stuff like this, then you're causing problems for yourself. And I'll, I'll make a prediction now, which is that 10 or 15 years from now, Scrum will go the same way as this idea of planning all the software in advance because it pisses people off and it is going to lead to overruns. That's my prediction and it may be completely wrong. So I'll, I'll leave you with that thought. Oh, oh yeah, there's one last thing I want to say, which is that apparently Google, who should know a thing or two about software design, they let people spend a fifth of their time, I believe, I've heard, doing what they want as long as it's software and I assume Google will own the final result and they've been a very successful company and I'm sure there are a variety of reasons for that but this might be this might well be a part of it because by doing this Google are recognizing that creativity is central to the process of software design and implementation and if you piss people off and they're not on your side then you're not going to get things out on time and in budget. And even if you do, the software you release will be soulless and probably horrible. So it's really important to create a good working atmosphere. And I would say that anything that tends to destroy people's peace of mind and creativity has got to be a bad thing. And anything that helps people to feel on the side of the management team and to feel that they want the company to succeed is something that's going to help you get your software out on time. So that's it for this video and uh, in the subsequent videos I'm not going to give you quite so much opinion and we're going to concentrate on actual design patterns. So join me again next time and until then, happy coding.